welcome to my sewing room. We have such a wonderful show for you today. I'm really excited about it. My guest will be Joyce Drexler. Joyce is co-managing partner of Sulky of America. She's also the author of the book, Sulky Secrets to Successful Quilting. And let me show you some beautiful quilts. This is a wonderful idea. It combines quilting, machine embroidery, and then giving some inspirational quotations. This one said, life is so easy, let go and let God. And what beautiful colors. I love quilts. I imagine most of you watching this show do also. This is another one of the beautiful quilts with all machine, of course, totally machine made, combining quilting and a wonderful machine embroidery. Oh my, my favorite colors in the whole world. Look at this beautiful quilt with flowers and a solid fabric and the sashing. And our theme for today will also be the simple star block quilt. This is another one of the beautiful watercolor quilts. This really isn't a quilt, it's a wall hanging. Now isn't this pretty and wouldn't this be the most wonderful major decorative item in a bedroom or in a uh, den? Once again, combining statements, beautiful inspirational statements and machine embroidery. This has to be one of the most precious quilts I have ever seen. The fabric has some little children. Again, the, the simple star block quilt, but the fabric has some little children. At, maybe in the 1930s, there's a little boy wearing a cute little 1930s suit. You know how I love the clothing of the earlier part of last century, I might add. And you know what? This quilting is not just limited to quilts. Would you like something fun and easy to do that you can really wear? How about putting the, the quilting and these wonderful statements uh, machine embroidered on a t-shirt for you to wear yourself. Here is another one with just simply the statements embroidered on a t-shirt. This says, um, we each learn in our own time. Let the sun shine though you, through your path, though your path is bright. Anyway, more cute things to wear for yourself, machine embroidery and quilting. And then look on the back, just some wonderful applique. Now, won't you come over to the technique boards with me? This is the most beautiful quilt square. It's a simple star block quilt, and you are going to just love it. Uh, to begin with, make the center section, and this is the prettiest uh, embellishment, the prettiest machine embroidery. It says, you bring joy to all that surround you. Breathe deeply and live, and that's an azalea that's been stitched in there. Next, let's make the side pieces. Okay, starting with a rectangular piece of pink, I'm going to temporary spray adhesive the square down the, wh the white one and go from corner to corner. Then I'm going to stitch from corner to corner and then this quilt begins to appear. This, this piece begins to appear. Now, that's going to be too much bulk. So what I'm going to do next is open this one up and trim away this other side of the whitish section. Now, I'm going to put another square on here, stitch from top to bottom just like I did diagonally fold it back. Once again, I'm going to go in and trim away the second layer so I'll have a seam allowance there. Now let's look at the whole piece. Those four pieces I just made, the triangular pieces, go here, 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 and here. Then there is a solid block at each corner. Now I have a bunch of pieces here. It's time to put them together. First of all, we're going to piece the top three pieces, then the middle three pieces with this beautiful embroidery on it, and then the bottom three pieces, and now it's time to put them together. And as you can see, we have that beautiful star quilt with a really nice embroidery in the middle. Now to show you how this was done, I am going to introduce to you my business colleague and very dear friend, Joyce Drexler. Joyce is the co-managing partner of Sulky of America and the author of the new book, Sulky Secrets to Successful Quilting. Joyce, welcome to the show. Oh, it's so much fun to be with you, Martha. Oh, I know. It. <laughs> and this is so pretty what you're oh, doing. Thank you. Thank you. And it's so easy and that's, it's so much fun. That's the word we like. Yeah. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Martha, when we begin this, uh, while you're doing uh, your your quilting uh, 
putting the, the block together, you can have your machine, uh, if you have two machines, which most which of us we have, mostly do. <laughs> have one doing the embroidery for you. Okay. Now the way to set up for that, Martha, is you want to have two layers of the stabilizer behind it. And what I do is use the temporary spray adhesive to put all the layers together. There's actually three layers of a tearaway lightweight stabilizer. And then we hoop it in the, um, the hoop. Now you have to cut your square bigger than what it's going to end up as. And that's fine because we will be able to trim that down to make our center square. Now the first thing we do here is we draw off, we want to have this block to be six and a half inches wide. So we have drawn off the measurement so we can trim it to be exactly six and a half inches, which this one is. Now we have set that aside and uh, we're going to be making those pieces that you were showing. Uh, how easy it is to make the triangles. Actually, I got it upside down here. We first mark this, the square, the light colored square, and that will be turned back. Once we stitch it right on the line, we will turn that back. Before we turn that back, though, we want to be able to take out that, that extra little piece, like you said, so there's not so much bulk. And that works out very well. And we continue doing that for as many, uh, we need four of these sets for the um, star, actual star area of the, of the block. And as you can see, oh, you will do so this in a, in a pieced method. You will do this strip to that, this to this. You put right sides together and do a quarter inch seam allowance. Same thing here. And so what we did was we used the same color fabric as we used for these triangles. So it will make a star in the end. Joyce, those are such pretty flowers too. Oh, thank they look you. Like real flowers. I had a lot of fun oh. drawing those and, oh, and coming beautiful. up with the same. They're beautiful. So again, we're going to sew those together in segments as you as you showed them, and it's very simple to do that. And your final square then is that simple star block, which is really pretty. Really beautiful. Now I wanted to also show you how you make those little butterflies that were in the corners of those wall hangings you were showing, because a lot of people like that. We have made small triangular pieces and we simply put a, a, a solid one next to it, do a seam allowance there, and then open that up, you'll end up with this. And when you make two of them and put them together, as you see here, you end up with a little butterfly Joy, square. Show me that little pillow where I can sure. get a good look at that. Sure. It is so it is so pretty, those As little butterflies. As you can see, that little butterfly ends up being the corner block. And you've done a little block. squiggly on there, too. Yeah, a little that's, part, that's part of the, the quilting, <laughs> okay. exactly. So the next thing we want to do, then, is put the sashing on. Now, the sashing is this solid, uh, long piece, and that adds the actual block size to the block and separates it from the block below it. And that's what we've done there. And that's really the end of the piecing. Now I did want to talk to you a little bit about the importance of the different threads you use when you quilt. Okay. Now to get our sandwich, which I have here, to make the quilt block, I have actually a backing fabric that's right side down, then I have my, my batting, and then I have my block on top of it. And the very first thing that you want to do there is spray with the temporary spray adhesive all the layers together. And that way you don't have to struggle with the pins, which is really Joyce, great. I love that temporary spray. <laughs> I use it for everything. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. It is. It I, is. I don't know how we lived without it. Makes it easy, and that's our makes favorite Makes it word. easy. <laughs> and I don't get stuck. That's what I like a lot. But um, the other thing I want to point out then is the thread that we use. And I thought I'd bring this pillow back up and show you uh, these different threads that are used in the quilting process. Now this one, that's uh, this is a stipple quilt. Uh, uh, type of stitch. Mm -hmm. This is actually the stipple stitching. It's very small and minute and you don't want to overlap any. This one is called meandering or serpentine stitching. It's just the larger version of what stipple quilting is. And then here we did what we call echo quilting where we use the foot as a guide and leave an eighth to a quarter of an inch uh, from the edge of the seam. And here we did a, a wonderful free motion type of quilting along the edge using a 30 weight, heavy weight type of thread. So I just wanted to point out that what that twist thread that we used in the quilt shows, uh, you actually, we've actually combined two of the threads of the 40 weight 
and twisted them together to make the 35 weight twist thread. Which gives it depth and really looks right. like it's a flower. It does. It and is it, truly it doesn't amazing just look the solid. depth that right. you get with that exactly. one. I love that twist thread. Well, thank you. Now, I wanted to show you a little bit about the quilting aspect of it. You do want to lower your feed dogs. I've put the darning foot on the machine and we have lowered the top tension. Okay. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this. I'm just holding on to my quilt and moving it in a, a, a nice smooth even speed of the machine and a nice smooth delivery of the thread. Now you can go right into the block area there and continue all the way through the quilt. So relaxing, Joyce. Now what so you might, might find that you want to do, Martha, is before you start quilting there, you should use an invisible poly thread okay. and stabilize it before you start doing your stippling. Before you start doing mm -hmm. the stippling. Oh, Joyce, this is so fascinating and so beautiful. And what I really love is those little inspirational statements that are in the blocks. I was at an auction at um, Christie's in London a number of years ago. Really? And a quilt with inspirational blocks sold for $15,000. So I think oh, I'm going to have to make those. Oh my goodness, you're going to have to make those, that's right. <laughs> and next we have sewing for Jack and Jill. Shaped bias is very easy to make and shape, and it looks especially cute on little boy clothes, I think. This is Silk Dupioni, which has been shaped in a very narrow bias on the front of this little boy suit and the collar, and it has a really pretty piping out of the Silk Dupioni too, the little knicker suit. Here is another little suit that's a sailor collar, which has shaped bias done in a plaid. Now, I'm going to turn it around on the back so you can also see the shaped bias on the back, which is really precious. Now making this shaped bias is what we're going to do right now and it's really very easy. First of all, trace off your design on your collar or wherever you're going to put it and then make the shaped bias. Now I do have a secret and a trick for you on shaped bias. These little gizmos are the ones that you use for shape bias. Now a long time ago, I used to pull it like this with the opening to the top and Sue Pennington taught me a new trick. It's so much easier if you turn the opening to the bottom that I'm going to take my iron and push it along and my bias will fold in working in this direction and it's so much more precise as you can see how my bias was made and it was really very easy just pushing the iron along. Next I shape the bias and by the way it's very easy to do just simply push it and pull it a little bit. If you want to stick pins in a board you can as we have done here and after that I will repin it so I can come around and come around and then I'm now ready to go to the sewing machine and just tiny little zigzag. Now let me show you another trick. If you will come along and stitch until when the bias goes underneath the other piece, stop stitching. Come over here when the bias goes over the other piece, continue stitching. That is called Celtic bias lace shaping and that really makes it much more interesting for the stitching. And now we have a silk ribbon segment for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my business colleague and very dear friend Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is the author of the book Colonial Inspirations, quite a renowned embroidery teacher around the world, as well as a wonderful designer for So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha, for your welcome. It's such a pleasure to be with you. Martha, today, we, as you know, with this quilt, we've had a little bit of whimsy. And today I'm going to talk about the, the butterflies, just these little half butterflies. I think they're rather fun. I quite like these. And then we're also going to talk about these ferns that I've used here. Just makes a little change, I think, from the usual leaves and, and things that we normally would use. The other thing that I will mention that I haven't is just this little tiny um, feather stitch that we have just linking all the different um, s sections of the flowers that we have here. Just, just seem to need that little point. So we'll just put that to one side and we'll look at how we do these. Now you will see that we start with a longish straight stitch here 
on an angle and again we don't want any twists in this so here we have this long stitch there then in the same color we're going to put a French knot on top to form the head we don't want this too tight just enough to sit nicely there then we're going to do three stitches in the second color and I do like to use the sort of slightly stronger colors here I think they look really good so we've got one two three there then we move on to the second color putting again three stitches but this time we're making them drop a little bit and finally using some of this must my favorite mustard thread <laughs> we're going to put just the little antenna here which is really only a pistol stitch so we're just going to look at that quickly you will see I've got my straight stitch already there we're going to put this French knot on top like so and then you can see here I have my I've already got that section I'm all ready to put in these wings the first one will be a little bit shorter we'll then do the second like that and there's the third don't pull them too tight and then on to the third here the third color and again we're putting in those three like that and then finally we've got the antenna here and as I said just a simple pistol stitch a wrap of three wraps and that will just pull that one tightly there and take it through like that now that was so simple wasn't it well it was Beverly <laughs> you make everything simple <laughs> now we're going to move to the ferns and these are uh, really just a fly stitch so we're starting with the first stitch here then here's our first stitch here you can see how we can make these as short or as long as we want we can make them as big as we want just depending on the area that needs to be filled you'll also notice that they're quite close they're not tight together but they are uh, just sitting there nicely so you'll see here I have my first stitch which is a little straight stitch then I'm going to have this second stitch here like this and you can see it's not too close there and then we'll just keep on going like this we can put in as many as we want if we want to put a curve into it then we will just take the tail of the fly stitch and we'll curve that round and it will just go on round there you can see this one I've got it a little bit longer so as you saw on the quilt here you can just see that some of these are really quite long some of them are shorter but Definitely. it's very that, versatile that is so those are two wonderful stitches and I, I really love the fern I really love the butterfly so you know I well I love all of your stitches <laughs> and next we have a wonderful notion idea for you I have a beautiful product, a beautiful ribbon product that I think you might enjoy learning a little bit about, a little bit about its past. Wired ribbon that would make a beautiful flower like this has been around since turn of the century. And actually, turn of the century, women really got tired of having to do all of the labor with their needles and with their hands and decided that they would actually sew ribbon into the wire, or sew ribbon, sew wire into the ribbon, just like this product right here. Now, why it's really so great for our projects, and I will show you how I make this a little bit later. Um, you can find all types of ribbons out of the wired ribbon, a shaded sort of ribbon called an ombre, which is wonderful for making beautiful leaves like this, and uh, all different widths of ribbons. We even have a ribbon that is a, an organdy ribbon, a very sheer and beautiful ribbon, which would make a beautiful flower like this. You can use them in all different types of ribbon projects. Um, this is an unusual wired ribbon, 
and you can see we've used rather plain leaves here but what's nice about the wired ribbon is how easily it folds let me just show you I've already started to fold this and you can see how how delicately it folds with no problems and I can fold it back so easily so the wired ribbon is really the ribbon of choice for me uh, and I hope that you'll consider using it in some of your projects also This pillow is so easy to make and has a lot of really nice features. First of all, the vase for the pillow is little bits of braid that have been fused down. Then the flowers came straight off of a little stem of flowers I'll show you in just a minute. This is what I think is so interesting. A little star stitch and a beautiful shiny green was used for the center of the flowers to stitch it down on the machine. This pillow is not totally hot glue gunned. Anyway, you see each one of these little flowers has been stitched down with the on the machine. And then there's some more little braid and green and lavender that kind of weaves through it to give it a little bit of a just a pretty design. Now then let's make the flower pot first. First of all I draw a pattern out of paper and then I will cut some of this sticky, the sticky uh, fusible uh, netting is what it really looks like and you see the flower pot was made out of this gold braid right here. Now let me show you what we do next after we get the sticky fusible. I'm going to put all the braid down here just simply go across it and it's very sticky and then when you press it it is permanently attached and then of course I will zigzag the vase to the pillow. Now the flowers, uh, these little flowers just come on a stem at the craft store and what you do is pull them off of course and then I'm going to make it easier to get into these flowers that little plastic part on the back needs to go away because I can't sew through that little plastic part. Pull the little top part off and I end up with a couple of pieces of flower which later I'm going to sew together, going to put them down and sew them and put it all back together nice and flat. I have several little pieces of flowers and several leaves. All of them are going to just be stitched on on the sewing machine. And once again, I'm going to use, I've already started these over here, I'm going to use my temporary spray adhesive and I'm going to spray it I'm going to spray the flower over away from the fabric. I'm not going to put temporary uh, spray adhesive on my fabric. All right, I'm going to put the spray adhesive here, and then I'll do a little bit more of spray adhesive over here, like so. Kind of glue it down. And then I've already set my machine on a star stitch, so I'll slip it over, lower the presser foot, and I will do a star stitch right in the middle. Now I have white thread, but it'll be a lot prettier if you go in the middle of the flower with a green thread. And then there is my flower all stitched down. I can do the same thing with a leaf. I will take my leaf and go up underneath the flower and go up underneath that flower. And again, I can just do my star stitch again, or I could do a regular stitch. But all I do is just go in and stitch my leaf. And you can see how easy it is to get these little flowers and leaves attached to this really pretty pillow. By the way, it's made out of silk dupioni, which is one of my favorite fabrics. And now won't you come along to my attic with me? I love netting. And apparently the Victorians love netting also. This little dress that's so sweet at the top, just some little purchased ribbon flowers around the neckline. And then look at the hand embroidery, which has been dotted across the English netting. And then we just have some pretty Battenberg type lace. Really pretty skirt. This is absolutely a beautiful combination of hand embroidery. Of course, if you have an embroidery machine, it can be done by machine. And then there's a little Battenberg inset inside the circle. The skirt is wonderful. You know, one of my favorite things in the whole world is, is folded tucks or double needle pin tucks. These happen to be folded tucks. Another little piece of Battenberg lace insertion. And then four folded tucks on the bottom also. This mother or grandmother that made this dress with a whole lot of love for some precious little one put as much work on the back as she did on the front. And that is one of the things I just love to show people is the detail that was given to the back. Now the dress is lined, just a little lining so you don't have to wear a slip and you can't see through it. Thank you for coming to my sewing room today. Won't you come back next time? Mm -hmm.